I am not set up. <laughs> Hold on, everybody. Welcome to IAEI News Live. My name is Thomas Dimitrovich. Today's discussion is on the time current characteristic curve, TCC curve. We're going to learn about what it is, what it does, what it tells you, what it doesn't tell you, and at what um, and what you need to know. And it all starts now. Hey, <laughs> hello. Um, Tom Dimitrovich here, and this is IAEI News Live. It's Tuesday. It's Christmas week. This is a special week. I know I am uh, a little discombobulated today, but um, today's discussion is on the time current characteristic curve. Now, when I think of the time current characteristic curve for a circuit breaker or a fuse, I always say it is the resume for that overcurrent protective device. It'll, it will tell you how the device will perform and react. Hey, Felix, TSDN members alive and well out there in the field. International, thank you, Felix, for joining in. So the TCC curve is the resume of an overcurrent protective device. And we use the time current characteristic curve to tell us how a circuit breaker will respond to current being passed through it, regardless really of the voltage. Um, because we do a lot of testing of circuit breakers at lower voltage because they respond to current. Now, you always have to apply a circuit breaker at its rating or less than its voltage rating. And the reason is because of the pressure and, and the fact that you're going to separate a set of contacts, you're going to stop the flow of current and voltage matters when you do that. <laughs> so, but the time current characteristic curve is not dependent upon the voltage. You may or may not understand that, but just be, be mindful that it's about current. So, if, for example, if I have a 20 amp circuit breaker at 480 volts, and I apply it at 240 volts, I don't change the time current characteristic curve because I have applied it, that circuit breaker, at a lower voltage. It's still going to respond the same way to current. It will still, from a from a uh, uh, time versus current perspective, it will still respond above 20 amps. Whether that 20 amps is at, if it's a 600 volt rated breaker like this breaker here, this circuit breaker here is. <laughs> Got to make sure. Want to make sure I'm honest here. This is a. 600 volt breaker. It's a 600 volt rated breaker, straight rated. This breaker will um, will respond per per its time current characteristic curve. If you even if you applied it at uh, 480 volts, or if you applied it at 240 volts, current. Go look at current, Mr. Abasi. All right, he's back for remote work for the next three months. Awesome. Well, I don't know if that's good or bad, Mather, but uh, we got you back. You're back in the back in the fold with the technical social distancing network right here on IAEI News Live. So thanks for joining us. And we've got William Snyder, Code Ninjas. Here we go. All right. So what we're talking about today, guys. Is you see it down on the bottom of this device, these little dials that are here? These little dials can be that we call that the trip unit. So technically, yeah, this one has dials. 
So you see how this is. So this is what's down on the bottom of this trip unit. Okay? So this is an electronic trip unit that goes inside of a circuit breaker. And I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what manufacturer, uh, whether it be an Eaton, a Squared E, GE, Siemens, it doesn't matter. They all, we all have trip units like this that we put inside of a circuit breaker. And I call this thing here the brain. That's the brawn. This is the brain. The brawn does the work, gets the contacts open and does the work in getting it done. But this brain has, you'll see what's here. This is what's inside the breaker. And this is uh, technically what you where you land your load lugs onto, your load cut lugs. And this up here is the, <clears throat> the terminal that goes into the circuit breaker. And you'll notice a, a little black thing right here. These three little black things. Those are sensors, CTs, basically, current transformers. So there, this, this metal is bent. It goes up, over, through the sensor, and back out again. So there's three donuts in here, not the donuts that you eat. Three donuts. Hey, Nihad, glad to, glad to see you. So we've got, um, I, don't see, uh, I don't see Japan represented yet, but we've got... Uh, United States represented. We've got Colombia. We have uh, Egypt. I'm not sure. I know earlier we had, uh, so I went quickly live this uh, a little bit earlier this morning, about two hours ago. We had Ireland on as well. We had Phil and crew. So uh, hopefully we'll get more people to pile in. All right. So um, what we're going to talk about today is the trip curve, which is for the most part in an electronic trip unit, is what's in this, the microprocessor that's in here. It senses the current that's going through these CTs and based upon an algorithm, it will decide when to tell the circuit breaker to open. Okay, and, and, and the trip units will look different. We have, we have uh, uh, an LED display here. We've got rotary dial here. We've got a little square box that you'll probably see these types of trip units on larger frame breakers. Obviously, I'm not going to fit this into a small molded case. This is going to be something that's going to be larger, and it has dials on it, and it has what looks like a time current characteristic curve. Uh, and some of the real larger breakers, you'll see even trip units that are much larger, uh, and, and they'll give you some value. Now, this one here happens to be an RMS 700, which is an older trip unit. So trip units come in different sizes and shapes and forms. The interface for the user will be different. There'll be rotary dials on the front that you turn and will change the trip curve. And, um, and, and remember, the trip curve is the, um, it, it tells you how the device this device, any of these devices are going to respond. Now for a fuse, I know you guys are thinking about fuses out there. I know, uh, oh, we got Michael Hofkin. Michael, I got your email right after this. I will send you an email uh, about our images, no problems. And we got Steve Froming in the house. So Math or Abbasi, you guys in New York City, I know you got a lot of fault current and you'll typically see fuses. Now, a fuse has a trip curve, a time current characteristic curve. Don't forget, TCC is not time current curve. It's a time current characteristic TCC curve. So we do say TCC curve, not TC curve or time current curve. It is time and current, but it's a characteristic that will change per devices. So don't forget TCC curve. Ireland is missing. I know. We'll, we'll pick him up. I'm sure he'll come in. Uh, and we all got our coffee. So, the time current curve, and I was playing with this today. I finally, I got, um, I finally got longer cords for my laptop, and I have the ATEM working. So my ATEM is working. I can bring this in. Oh, that's over here. Bring my drawer in a little bit so you don't bump into the curve. All right. So this 
is a trip curve for a BAB circuit breaker. Now you'll notice it looks a little different. Now this is, um, let's change it to, that's, let's change, this is 240 volts and let's change this to a 100 amp, 240 volt circuit breaker. Now you're gonna say 240 volts and I know what you're doing. I know what you're thinking. Right down here, it says 480. Now, first things first, what I'm in now is I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm in a program, a software application that is plotting this curve. And what you're seeing across the bottom is current. As, so way over there on the end is, is uh, zero current or 0.5 amps. This is a log to log paper, log base 10. So what you'll have to remember is that in between each line, I know typically what we do is when we have graph paper, if you have one to 10, the fifth line is five. The, the second line is two. And in between the second line and the third line is two and a half, right? You can't treat this paper that way. And let me tell you why. Log to log. It's a logarithmic scaled paper. So the distance between down here, the distance between this one and this two, halfway between is not 1.5. You'll notice the lines get closer together as we get to 10. So this is one and this is 10. If I would make them equidistant, the paper would be three miles long. Okay, this paper would be very, very long. So to shrink everything up, we do what we call a log to log rhythmic paper. So estimating a value in between, like if I went to 150 amps and I told you, show me 150 amps, I'll show you what 150 amps is per, um, per SKM. So here is 148, 152. So you're right in here is 150. And you'll notice where the tip of my arrow is, right down here, is not directly in between both of those lines. It's a little bit to the right. So halfway is not halfway in between those two lines. It's a little bit to the right of halfway. And it's because it's a log-to-log -log paper. That's why it's kind of difficult to pick data points off of a trip curve when you don't have like a computer. And remember, we're power systems engineers, or at least I am a power systems engineer. I'm worried about getting it into the ballpark. I'm not gonna worry about getting you to your exact row, your exact seat. I wanna get you in the ballpark. So that's what we're doing with these time current characteristic curves. When you are pulling numbers off in the field or wherever you're working on, you want to just get a, and you want to be conservative. That's why we're, we always want to be a, a more conservative for a safety perspective. All right. Uh, hi, Tom. Steve Cavalleras. Hey, Steve. Having my lunch and enjoying a presentation. Excellent. I'm glad you're having lunch. I have to go back to work. Can't wait to catch the rest of the show later. All right, Bill, Mr. Snyder. Catch it later, buddy. We'll be on the IAEI's YouTube site. Okay, so, and don't forget to subscribe, please. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're new to this channel, hit that subscribe and click the bell. All right, so, the um, across the bottom is current, and up the side is time. And you'll see right over my shoulder here, it says time. So, we have 0.01 seconds down at the bottom. And Okay, so... Whenever you see a time current characteristic curve, typically we will start that curve at 0 0.01 seconds. And you'll notice that this time current curve right here doesn't curve over like a circuit breaker. Typically, if a circuit breaker, we call it the foot, right? And you don't see one here. Why is that? Is there a foot to this circuit breaker? And my answer to that question 
is yes. All circuit breakers have feet. They have feet. And it's up to you to specify if they have arms. <laughs> and that's the arc reduction maintenance switch. I just made that up. I'm telling you what, life can't get better. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you that circuit breakers do have feet. So this is the uh, BAB circuit breaker, quick lag. There's my BAB right here, okay? So that's BAB. And if I look at this circuit breaker right here, it says 240 volt BAB, all right? So this curve that you're looking at right here is what you'll see in SKM or EDSA or Easy Power or any of those software applications. What you're seeing here is the manufacturer's trip curve. So this is the technical data. And, and you'll notice, what's this down here? That's a foot, okay? This is where it curves over, but look at the time, 0.01 seconds. This curve goes down to 0 0.001 seconds. And you might ask yourself, why would SKM and EDSA and easy power all start at 0.01 seconds. They just do. That's what they do. That's how they do. That's how they roll. That's what they do. There's nothing wrong with starting it at 0.01 seconds, but you always have to be mindful that there is a curve. There is a curve down below 0.01 seconds, and it's moving this way towards me. It's a foot. And I'll show you, um, we'll plot an F-150, the circuit breaker, not the truck. So we're gonna add a trip curve to this. And I'm going to go to new, boom. And I'm going to go up here to static trip. No, I'm gonna go to a thermal magnetic circuit breaker. And we're going to use the same voltage, 240 volts. I'm going to go to the library. And I'm going to pick an F-150, an FD. An FD breaker goes from 15 amps to 225 amps. So there's my FD breaker right here. See that? Look at that. And that is a 15 amp breaker. So I'm, I'm going to plot. This is a 100 amp BAB. I'm going to plot a 100 amp FD breaker. Two forty volts. Both the same amp rating of a breaker and you'll notice the blue hash marks. There's a foot there. See that right there. We didn't see that on the BAB breaker. Why is that? Because the BAB breaker in this current region, say a thousand amps, goes faster than the F frame circuit breaker. Why is that? Think about that F frame circuit breaker. The F frame circuit breaker goes up to, what did we say? An FD breaker can go up to 225 amps without changing the frame. The frame is the size of the circuit breaker. So without changing the size of the circuit breaker, I can go always down to a 15 amp breaker, all the way up to a 225. The frame is bigger, the contacts are bigger, the arms are bigger, they have a longer way to travel. It takes longer for this F-frame breaker to open its contacts than a little BAB breaker, which would, I wish I had one with me. It's a much smaller circuit breaker. It's a miniature circuit breaker. So a smaller circuit breaker means the springs are lighter. It means the contact travel, arm travel is uh, smaller. Uh, the distance is less. It acts faster for the fire, higher fault currents. Now, when I, um, let's, let's put the BAB, let's put this BAB down to a um, 
30 amp or a 20 amp. So I have a 240 volt 20 amp circuit breaker and I have a 100 amp F frame circuit breaker. Now you'll you now this is what when we compare circuit breakers together when we do coordination if you're looking at separation of trip curves you'll notice a pinch point right here these two curves are getting close to each other now what does this curve tell us tell us let's just get back to basics what does the curve tells us tell us this BAB breaker here. This is a 20 amp circuit breaker. And you'll say, wait a second, Tom, this is at 10 amps. This says 10. Why would that be a 10? You know why? It's a 240 volt circuit breaker, but I'm plotting it at 480. So I have to change my scale. So this is another important learning moment. When you look at a time current characteristic curve, always look at the voltage scale. So what I have to do is I have to take this and I have to go to TCC settings and change this to 240 volts. And now my, you'll notice my curves shifted because I'm plying them at a different voltage level. 240 volt at 240 volts, 10 amps or 20 amps is right here. So why did it change? Let's talk about that real quick. Why did the, sh the curves shift? When I just told you earlier that, that a 20 amp breaker is going to trip at 20 amps regardless of the voltage you apply it at. Right? Didn't I say that? I did say that. And that is still true. The reason the curves tripped, I mean shifted, is because remember that 20 amps at 480 is not 20 amps at 240. The equivalent current, it's just like a transformer. So to get, if I had, if I had uh, 20 amps at, um, at, at uh, 240, and I wanted to know what's the equivalent current at 480. It, you're doing a transformer. You take you take uh, the 20 amps times 240, divide that by 480, and that will give you the equivalent at 480. Now you don't do that to a trip curve on a circuit breaker, because the trip curve will always respond to 20 amps regardless of the voltage. So. There's two different things going on right here. I have a trip curve for a circuit breaker that's rated 240 volts. But I have a time current characteristic curve, a plot, a piece of paper that is at a reference voltage. So if I had, for example, the time current characteristic curve on the primary of a transformer, and a time current characteristic curve on the secondary of the transformer, I can plot them both on the same paper, but I have to reflect the time current curve from the primary to the secondary based on the turns ratio. I know that's got to be freaking confusing for you. But think about it this way. I have a piece of paper that, is, that has a voltage rating it has current across the bottom and time across the top. This is a voltage rating. The overcurrent device, if I apply it at that voltage, I use the time current characteristic curve. If my time current characteristic curve is at a different voltage, if my breaker is at a different voltage physically in the system, if my breaker is a, a 600 volt rated breaker, and I have it applied on the primary of a transformer at 480, and I want to compare it to a breaker that's a, a, on the secondary, the secondary breaker does not see the same current as the primary because of the turns ratio of the transformer. So when I make a plot, and what SKM does it, this does it for you in the background, it has to convert all of those, all of that data to the same reference voltage. I don't know if I'm if I don't know if I'm clear if that makes sense to you guys and gals. It makes sense to me, but it it's just because I'm 
familiar with it. So what we want to make sure we always have is we understand the voltage at the bottom of this. We always want to understand that is current times one. If I want to shift the curves, say I want to make um, uh, this, this item here that says 100, I can make that 1,000 by going to TCC settings and say current scale times one. That means everything in here is shifted because 10 is 100. 100 is 1,000, 1,000 is 10,000. So I've shifted the scale across the bottom. So all of my curves went to the, to the left. Or you're right, I don't know. They went to the left. Um, so now 20 amps is actually here instead of up here because if this is, I'm sorry, 20 amps is here. This is at, at, on number two. So 2 is 20, 3 is 30, 10 is 100. If I take this back and I go TCC settings, take this back to 0 and hit OK, now 20 is 20, 100 is 100. So, And what this curve is telling you is that at 100 amps, this breaker is going to trip anywhere between 1.45 seconds and seven seconds it's going to trip somewhere in this region that's why it's a band so what do we learn about the tcc curves now this this is in skm this is in skm it's doing things for you right it's already telling you that these are raw amps these are raw amps across the bottom at 240 volts so if you're on the secondary of a transformer and it's 240 volts, this is the current. If you applied this at 480, you would have to change the scale, voltage scale, to 480 volts. Because 20 amps at 240 is not 20 amps on the primary of a 480 to 240 volt transformer. Right? So you have to always consider the voltage scale and the voltage levels that each of these overcurrent devices are applied at. I hope I, I hope that's clear. Clear as mud, Felix says. I know it's it's um it's 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 a hard thing to understand. And and one one way that I've um, tried to do this in the past is just think about a transformer, right? Think about a. Um, Think about, I had my, where's my pen? Felix, where's my pen? You guys know where my pen is? Here it is, it's right here. Found it. Don't worry, got it. So here's what we're gonna do. Um, Cause I, th I think it's really important to understand this concept because we're, we're transposing currents. And that's why whenever I do tra transformer fundamentals, I talk about reflecting currents from secondary to primary. And I teach that. <clears throat> and some people say, well, why? <clears throat> this is one of those reasons why you teach the transposition of currents from primary to secondary. So if I have if I have a transformer like this. And on the secondary, I have, um, and this is 480 to uh, 208. Doesn't want to write. 208. <laughs> if I had um, 100 amps on the secondary, if I wanted to know for if 100 amps is flowing through the secondary at 208, I would if I put an ammeter on the primary of that transformer, it wouldn't be 100 amps. Hey, Steve, it would not be 100 amps. Hey, we got Southfield, Chris, excellent. Thanks for being here. 
Steve Calvalaris. Thanks for joining us. So, if I have 100 amps on the secondary of this transformer, I don't, if I put an ammeter on the secondary, I have 100 amps. If I put an ammeter on the primary, I wouldn't see 100 amps. What would I see? I see 100 times 208 and divide that by 480. It's thinking. 480 volts. It's not one to write it for me, but we're, let's just do the math. I have 100 times 208 divided by 480. I would see 43 amps on the primary. I don't know why it's not doing, why it's doing that. Put it in presentation mode. Four eighty. It's not liking me. Probably too much for this computer. So, so well, it's really slow. So if I had if I had um, hundred amps on the secondary, I would see forty three amps on the primary. So what you're doing with a time current characteristic curve when you are plotting primary and secondary over current devices, you're doing this transposition. If I have a hundred amp breaker on the primary of say at forty four eighty volts, if I had a hundred amp breaker, my hundred amp trip curve plotted at two oh eight. Plotted at 208, I would have 100 times 100 times 480, which is because it's the primary breaker, divide that by 208, and I get 230. So my 100 amp breaker would be, would the, the very long time pickup would be plotted at 230 amps because it's on the primary and I'm reflecting it to the secondary. So I'd have to transpose my curve because 230 amps on the secondary is 100 amps on the primary. And that's where the trip curve is. Maybe that helps, helps you understand. So if I'm plotting, it, you know, if I'm plotting all of my curves and I have a primary and a secondary of a transformer, I'm doing that transposition on the TCC curve. So I'm going to close Outlook because it doesn't like me. And I'm not sure why. All right, there it is. Don't save. All right, I'm back to normal over here. All right, so the TCC curve. The TCC, don't save, cancel. Don't save. All right, not saving. The TCC curve tells us what, tells us what the, um, how a, a, an overcurrent protective device will respond to current. As current goes up, the clearing time comes down. So for the um, for this F100, this is an F100, right? Yeah, it's a 100 amp circuit breaker. For 100 and for 200 amps, this line right here, 200 amps, it's going to take anywhere from I go to the bottom of the line, anywhere from 32 seconds to 152 seconds. 152 seconds. What is that? Minutes. Remember, it's 60 minutes a second. 152 seconds. Divide that by 60. Two and a half minutes. Okay, now, so, so David, you're getting into selective coordination. First thing we have to understand is just the plotting of these curves before we start talking about selective coordination or any type of coordination. We just have to understand that the curves will tell us how fast it will trip based upon what we're seeing here. For example, 
the the red curve, the downstream curve, is a BAB 20 amp circuit breaker. The uh, this black curve here is an F100. Now, what do we know for the for say we have 5,000 amps flowing through both of these circuit breakers? 5,000 amps is where? 5,000 amps, three, four, five, right here. This is 5,000 amps. How do I know that? Look down the bottom, there's 43. There's 5,000 amps right here where my mouse is. Okay, so for 5,000 amps worth of current, what do I know? I know the BAB breaker, that red breaker, is going to trip somewhere faster, somewhere south of 0.01 seconds. 0 0.01 seconds. And I see uh, Robert from Omaha is talking cycles. So what is one cycle? One cycle is 1 60th. Remember, 60 hertz is 60 cycles per second. So if I have one cycle, if I have 60 cycles per second, I take one cycle is 1 60th. So 60 and 1 over is 0 0.0167. So one cycle is 0 0.0167 seconds. Where is that on this curve? Here is 0 0.01 seconds. This is 0 0.02 seconds. One cycle. Is about right. Right where this cursor is right here. If you can see it. That is 0 0.0167 seconds. That's one cycle of current. So what does this tell me? This tells me that the BAB circuit breaker is going to open faster than one cycle. Is it current limiting? What is current limiting? Current limiting is less than a quarter, less than a half cycle, less than a half cycle. Based on this trip curve, I don't, I couldn't tell you if the BAB circuit breaker is current limiting or not. How would I know that? I'd have to look at the circuit breaker to see if it says current limiting. If it says current limiting, then it goes faster than a half of a cycle. And I wouldn't be able to show it on this time current characteristic curve. Why? Because I've, I start the curve at 0 0.01 seconds. But for 5,000 amps, for 5,000 amps, this BAB breaker is going to trip faster than one cycle. The F100, the blue curve, for 5,000 amps, is going to trip 3, 4, 5 in 0 0.014 seconds. 0 0.014 is still faster than a cycle, but not quite as fast as, and what do we know about the BAB? 0 0.01? Uh, how, how much of a cycle is that? 0 0.016 seconds. So 0 0.01, 0 0.016. You're about 62% of the cycle. Current limiting was a quarter cycle. So um, remember, Robert, for breakers and fuses, it's different. You're, from a current limiting perspective on a fuse, yeah, you're going to get a quarter cycle, not from a circuit breaker. You're not going to get that fast on a circuit breaker. It's just physically, physics. It's just physically impossible. Um, you have the separation of the contacts, all that good stuff. So you're, you'll get less than a half a cycle. You remember the, the clearing time, the total clearing time is not going to be less than a quarter cycle on a circuit breaker. It's going to be hard to get there. I'd have to look at some of the very small miniature breaker um, clearing times, but this F100 is not going to clear less than a quarter cycle. It's going to clear less than a half a cycle. All right, so, so what we can tell by, these, by the trip curve is based upon current, how fast the circuit breaker is going to clear the, the, the current. 
And now let's, let's, let's talk about the shape. Let's talk about the shape. These two breakers are not adjustable. They're thermomagnetic circuit breakers. You get, you bought a 100 amp thermomag breaker, you got a 100, 100 amp thermomag breaker. You can't make a 20 amp thermomag breaker out of it. You can't make a 30 amp thermomag breaker out of it. If you bought something that has a brain, an electronic trip unit, I could adjust it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add, we're going to add a 100 amp. What is the usual clearing time of an MCCB? Couple cycles. This one here, let's do this. Let's do another molded case. Let's do a, for Robert's sake, let's put a larger molded case circuit breaker. Let's change this one. Let's change this 100 amp breaker. Um, I go to the library, and that is an FD. Let's go to a larger breaker. Let's go to a KD breaker. There's a KD 100 amp. Look at that one. Look at that one, Robert. There's a, there's, here's a current limiting type of device for you. Here's 5,000 amps. I went from an FD to a KD breaker, and look how much faster this circuit breaker clears 5,000 amps. It's faster than 0.01 seconds. So this is the hard part, Robert, about typical clearing times or usual. It's hard to say. Now let's let's change this to a different. That's a 240 volt. That's a, that's a uh, let's go to a different. Let's go to a LD breaker. I'm not going to get a 100 amp LD breaker. We're going to do a 300 amp LD breaker. Look at the 300 amp LD breaker at 5,000 amps. At 5,000 amps, it's going to clear in 0.02 seconds. So what's 0.02 seconds? How many cycles is 0.02 seconds? So 0.02 divided by 0.0167, divide 1.2 cycles of current is going to flow for this LD. It's a larger frame breaker, more beef. The contacts are heavier. It's going to be a slower device, almost two cycles. So, Robert, let's go to, we're going to go change this LD breaker out with, um, how about an N frame, an ND? Well, that's, that's, that's a thermal mag breaker. Um, those are, these are all thermal mag breakers. So, um, but up, but up, but up. Just looking to see. I, I don't, let's do an a static trip. Let's do an electronic trip unit. So this is a brain. And we're going to change this to a uh, cut my hammer, Eaton. And we're going to take that same LD breaker with an Optum trip unit and adjust it down to 100 amps. Let's take a look at what it looks like. Look at this guy. Wow, tell me that's not the cat's meow. Okay, so this is 125 amps. I don't want 125. I want a 240 volts, 100 plug, um, 100 amp plug. So there is a 100 amp circuit breaker. But now look at this knee. Why, why would I do this? Why would I want to put, we, you know what we call this? A short time delay. I can move the short time delay up, and I can move the short time delay down. And I'll tell you what, there will be dials on the front of your circuit breaker that adjusts that portion of the curve. This is your short time delay pickup. Anytime you hear pickup, you're moving a curve left and right. So see how this moves to the left and right. That's the pickup value. And a short time, this is seconds. This will be the time value. I can give it a longer delay, and I can give it a longer, a higher pickup. But now look at this curve. If my BAB 20 amp breaker was downstream of this electronic trip unit, LD, a CHLD, at 100 amps, 
Uh, my long time pickup. I gotta put my long time pickup at one. There's my 100 amps, right? So there's my 100 amp. That's 100 amps. That's a, and, and now, now I'm good. So my, my, my coordination is good. But if I lowered this from 100 down, now I'm bumping into this knee of this curve. So that tells me I have an overlap. That tells me that for the, the, the more of an overlap that I have, the more likely I will have an unwanted trip or current in those ranges. So what you want to do with selective coordination or coordination in general, you want to make sure that you have no overlap of curves in the long time region. I'm not going to talk about the very high fault currents where you have to get into the tables because I'm talking TCC curves. So the TCC curve tells us how each independent breaker responds to current, it can be non-flexible like that red curve, or I can change the shape based upon the dials on the front of this breaker. I can bring in, uh, this doesn't have an adjustable instantaneous, but it does have, so this brings into, now, now let's talk a little bit. I will have say a short time delay, I'll have a long time delay, I have an adjustable instantaneous. So when you see LSI, a circuit breaker with LSI. That means it has a long time adjustability, a short time adjustability, that's this, and an instantaneous adjustability. If you just see an LI, that means I can adjust the top portion of this curve and the very bottom portion of the curve. If you see something that says an LS, then I have a long time adjustability, meaning I can change my long time pickup, lower values and higher values, and I can adjust my short time pickup, but I can't just adjust my instantaneous. So this is an LS breaker because I cannot adjust the instantaneous on this circuit breaker. Now, why would you want this up here is what we call the long time pickup. This value has to, has to be equal to or less than the opacity of your conductor. And you get into this is the protection. So you can go to the next higher overcurrent protective device, all that jazz. But you want this to protect the conductor. This, this up here, this portion of the curve, like on this one here, this is a 20 amp breaker. This is coming right here at 20 amps. If this is a 100 amp breaker, I want this at 100 amps. That's going to be what I'm protecting my conductor with. Is that a viable option to adjust for selective coordination? You can adjust. So what you would do, David, if I'm if if this was a project, this was a project, and my fault current was I don't know a thousand amps, right? So here's a thousand amps. I know that um, I'm not into the instantaneous region of this upstream 100 amp F frame breaker because. 100 amps is less than the instantaneous. I know that if that BAB downstream sees 100 amps, it's going to trip within 0.01 seconds. And I know that for 1,000 amps, this F100 is going to trip anywhere from 0 0.0117 seconds to 0 0.216 seconds, somewhere in this band. It's going to no faster than 0 0.01, 0 0.01, what is that, 0.119 or 0.12, and no, whoops, well, look, I can change it. I can bring it down. So I can say, you know what, why would I bring that down? Because at 1,000 amps, I might want to lower my incident energy if that's where my arcing currents were. I, want to, I might want to have a faster clear time to provide better protection a faster clearing time for those currents. I still have separation here. Can I move my curve over? Look at this, I can hug. Look how I can move that curve very close to the downstream device. Now, why? you might say, well, why do you need that knee in there? Because it reduces the amount of damage, 
when a fault occurs in between these two overcurrent protective devices. It will reduce damage. So uh, if, if my instantaneous is going to be here, I could, I could set that all the ways up, but what am I doing? When I let currents flow longer, I'm incurring more damage. So I might employ an electronic trip unit like this so that I can hug curves, I can bring them close together. And then, when let's say I add another one, I'm gonna add another device upstream. And let's say I add another static trip breaker, and I'm going to pick, see that last one was 100 amps, I'm gonna pick a 400 amp, KD breaker. Long time, short time, see the LS? That says LS. If I want an adjustability on instantaneous, I would get LSI. You see where I'm going? All right, so now this is going to have a long time, short time. 400, I got to put the, I don't have a one line diagram, so I have to manually tell it what I'm plotting at. So now I plot this breaker, and now I, I have a problem up here, so I've got to change these set points. My, um, my let's take a look at the settings. I'm at 400 amps. My my uh, long time pickup. Look at this plug. I got to put this up at 400. All right, so it shifts the whole curve to the right. So my plug's at 400. My uh, short time delay doesn't look bad. See, can I move it to the left? I can't. That's as far left as it'll go. This you see this line? How it's on a diagonal? You know what we call that? We call that I squared T. Now, why would we do I squared T? Obviously, it does not work with that downstream breaker because the downstream breaker is at an angle. But where would this help me? I'll show you where that I squared T would help you. I'm going to add another device. And you know what I'm going to add? I'm going to add a fuse. And I am going to put a 100 amp fuse in there. So let's go to a TCF fuse. I believe we make a TCF. Let's go for Busman, TCF 100 amp fuse. I'm going to put the voltage in, 240. All right, so this is a TCF fuse. That's obviously not 100 amps. It's 1 amp. There's my 100 amps. Now, if I move this a little bit further, look at that. So you ask, why would I have the I to the 4T or I to the square T to accommodate overcurrent protective devices upstream or downstream so I don't bump into their time current characteristic curve? So I can move my, this is what a protective device, this is what a power systems engineer, a relaying engineer, or a uh, coordination engineer. This is what they do. They pick these devices and the time current characteristic curves that will help them navigate and put breakers and fuses together in a power system. They call this coordination. That's why they call it the art of protective relaying. They used to call it that. It's an, it's an art. Why is it an art? Because you've got to pick the right trip units. Now think about this, David. A, the design engineer, when he's doing this, do you think that once he buys or she buys all of the equipment and installs it in the field, do you think that they're going to go, boy, I'm going to put a different trip unit on this breaker? No. You got what you ordered. And you have to work within those confines. If you didn't do something like this ahead of time, you wouldn't know which breakers and which trip units to purchase. So you sort of in the design phase, you've got to think about what breakers do you want? Are you going, are, if you're going to put a fuse in like I just did here, and you've got these breakers with these sharp right angles, you may say, I can't live with a sharp right angle. I need this I to the square T so that I can accommodate an overcurrent protective device that's in between. And even if it's a circuit breaker, I still have to accommodate it. So that's one of the reasons why we came out with electronic trip units to begin with. 
because we knew in the in the world of coordination like this, when you are trying to put multiple curves and say for a specific value of current, maybe it's an overload, maybe it's a ground fault, maybe it is a short circuit, maybe it's an arcing current. If you want the downstream to device to operate the one that's closest to the fault to operate first before the upstream device, you need to go through this process. You need to plot these curves. You need to make sure you have separation of curves. If you have an overlap, if this fuse was downstream, or I'm sorry, well, see, the, both of those are at 100 amps. So remember, this blue curve and this purple curve, this, this breaker curve, they're both 100 amp devices. So they're both the same device. I could... I could get rid of the breaker and say, I'm going to put a fuse there. I might say, I want a fuse there. Why do I want a fuse? Because I might say, I need to solve a problem because it has a very high fault current and I have a, I have a coordination issue between this blue curve, this breaker curve, and this green curve because they overlap way up here. So I replace the blue curve. I replace this F100 with a TCF100 fuse. And why would I do that? Because now for a very high fault currents, that fuse is going to go faster. It's going to open so fast that this, this uh, 400 amp breaker, this green breaker, won't even know the fault existed. So I have to make those decisions. I'll use the TCC curves. And in this overload region, all of these set points, all of these set points, they tell you what these characteristic curves are going to look like. And if I do a systems analysis study for selective coordination, Article 700, 701, 708, it's not just about what breaker I have. It's about the settings that get me these curves. Long time pickup. My long time pickup is up here. I can move long time pickup left and right. And look, it moves the whole curve. I can move my long time delay up and down. I can move it up. I can't move this. My long time delay is non adjustable. My short time pickup, I can move left and right. If I ship everything at minimum, I have a problem with an overlap in between that fuse and this circuit breaker. You would, I as an engineer, I would say, nope, my long time pickup needs to be here, which is. A, a three. It's at three times the long time pickup. My short time delay on this is fixed. I'm looking over here. See this here? Long time delay is fixed. Short time delay is fixed. Instantaneous is fixed. So the only thing I can change on here is my long time delay or my short time pickup and my long time pickup. Those are the only two things I can adjust. Everything else is fixed. Now, I could pick a different breaker if I, or a different trip unit if I wanted to. But if I didn't, I'm stuck. So remember, the curves, these curves, tell you how each of the individual devices will perform. But when you start plotting curves on top of each other, now you're getting into a coordination study. And this is in a software application. What happens? Now, let's just talk. I showed you a little bit about how SKM deals with it, right? Whether it be SKM, EDSA, Easy Power, it doesn't matter. Now, these, what behind, what's behind me, is this is the curve from the manufacturer. So this is the time current characteristic curve from the manufacturer. And I want to want to go over this a little bit with you because this is another plays another important part piece of the pie. There are there's these tables and information, and some of these some of these curves are like technical documents unto themselves. So what this is telling you is that this is for single pole breakers, 10 to 70 amps. We plotted a 20 amp breaker, remember? And it says for application and coordination purposes only, based on ambient cold start connected with four feet of rated wire per terminal, tested in open air with current in all 
polls. And what you'll notice here is I have the BAB, a QC, HQP. This is my voltage rating. This is the continuous current, 10 to 70 amps. And this is my interrupting rating, 10,000 amps. And look at this, I have a QC. You know, what would be the difference? So an, a, a BAB versus a QC, why would, and, and they're both, one goes from 10 to 70, one goes from 10 to 60, both 10,000 amp interrupting ratings. <laughs> Some of these catalog numbers will tell you how they bolt on to the bus. Remember, a panel board, a switchboard, whatever it's going into will tell you which catalog numbers it's, it accepts. For example, your residential panels, they're not bolt on. They're plug on breakers, right? Whether it's a GE, Square D, Siemens, Eaton, doesn't matter. Westinghouse, go back to Cutler Hammer, uh, go back to IT, whatever. They're either a they're push on. If you go to a commercial environment and you have a panel board, it's going to have bolt-on breakers. You can't accept the, those small residential breakers because they're for a different interface. So every panel board will have a different um, breaker identified that will fit in that panel board. So... Um, you have all the different breakers. Now look at this instantaneous trip range. For a 10 to 20 amp breaker, the instantaneous trip is from 200 to 400 amps. And we're going to see what that means down below. So this is showing you what the um, instantaneous values will be. Single pole test data. So a single pole test data will be a little different trip curve. Something to remember. Low magnetic types, HQP, QC, BAB. So that means you have low magnetic and high magnetic breakers. For time current curves, show thermal magnetic protection. Time current curves show thermal magnetic protection. Ground fault protection has a 5 milliamp uh, trip sensitivity. GFEP, equipment protection or protecting uh, protection of equipment, has 30 milliamp trip sensitivity. So GFCI is... 5 milliamp trip sensitivity. Ground fault protection of equipment is at 30 milliamp. And that 30 milliamp is something we pick. A lot of manufacturers use 30, some will use 50. So it depends on the manufacturer. Now let's take a look at the bottom of the curve. Look what this says. This says current in percent of trip unit rating. It's not current. It's not, that's not 10,000 amps or 20,000 amps. This is in percent of the trip unit rating. So 100 is 100%. Now here's how, oh, you gotta love this stuff. Here's how we used to do this. We used to take onion skin paper, take a blank sheet of graph paper, in fact, Log the log graph paper. Let me find a picture of one here. I know I got one. I don't have my onion skins. I used to have onion skins. We take log the log paper. Uh, let me do this. TCC onion skin. <laughs> Gotta love it. Enhanced. Let me look at images. Oh my gosh, they're showing me pictures of onions. Um, TCC log to log paper. Don't put onion skin in. All right. I mean, try it sometime. Is this log to log paper? That's not log to log paper. Where is log to log paper? Here we go. Um, this is coming out of a slide deck, but it's, um, it's, it's probably good enough. All right. So here's what we got. So this is, is log to log paper. And what we would typically do is we would overlay, we create a light table, which has blank paper. Then you take the manufacturer's curves this curve here, and you would overlay it, put 100% on 20 on the other paper, 
because 20 is 20 amp breaker. And look, if I go up, 100% is right there at 20. So this would be 20 amps. If this was a 30 amp breaker, this would be 30 amps. <laughs> yeah, slang terms don't get you uh, anywhere. So, so 100%, 200% of 20 amps is how many amps? Nikolai Tesla? I'm a senior citizen, Nick. Yeah, thanks, buddy. I'm a senior citizen, all right. So 200% of 20 amps is 40 amps. Okay, so you just, you just have to do the multiply. So what I'm trying to show you is that when you're looking at what the manufacturer publishes for circuit breakers, it's not straightforward because we put one curve out that covers a bunch of different ampere ranges. We have one curve. Think about it. This curve covers, what does it cover? It covers 10 to 70 amps. So that's 10 amps, 15 amps, 20, 25, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, at least eight circuit breaker trip curves in one curve that's the long time pickup this is how a, a a 20 amp breaker will pick will 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 act a 30 amp breaker will act a 50 amp breaker will act now take a look at this this is 50 to 70 amp breakers and 10 to 40 amp breakers the maximum single pole trip time so what is it when would you have a single pole ground faults if I have a ground fault event, I have current going through one pole, and, 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 and that tells you it takes longer when only one pole is opening. Why would that be? Because how they're constructed. In some cases, the, the, the device construction, there's a, there's a common lever that goes through all three poles okay so when i have current going through all three poles causing the magnetization i get one curve but if i don't have all three poles carrying a high fault current and only the one pole does that means that one pole has to open all three contacts but i only have the advantage of having the magnetic forces from one pole so when one pole has to carry the load of opening all three poles, it's going to take longer. Isn't that awesome? This is, this is so cool. That not only does this tell you how it responds to currents, but it gives you an idea of how it's constructed internally. Because for a single pole trip time, if it takes longer, that means one pole has to do the work for all three. It's the way it's constructed. So awesome. So awesome. So anyway, that's the long time pickup. Now, let's take a look at the short time delay. 15 to 20 amps, you would, remember, you're going to put this on another onion skin paper at 100%, and you're going to draw. So this tells you QCBAB, 15 to 20 amps, these are your instantaneous pickup values. You're going to draw this over, you're going to draw this down, but you're going to pull this down and pull that down if it's, um, if it's those breakers. It's just, it's just cool. I don't know about you, but it's pretty freaking cool. And then you'll notice that 0.01 seconds stops here, so you don't have to worry about plotting this. You would just stop it on that vertical. As it comes down. Now let's take a look at cancel. Let's take a look at an F frame. Um with a digit trip 310 plus trip unit. So this is an electronic trip unit circuit breaker. Okay. Look at these curves. Look how straight the lines are. 
Now, okay, look at this. The horizontal is not percent of rated. It's multiples of IR. And you go, well, what is IR? IR is over here. IR is your IN is 80, 160, 225. IR is your 15, 20, 30, 40, 50. So I have an 80 amp frame breaker, which would be your IN. And I have a 15, 20 amp, 30 amp, 40 amp. Make sense? So now you've got a multiple of what's in these tables. Now, if you look down uh, below, if you keep scrolling down, available long time delay is 2, 4, 7, 10, 12, 15, 20, 24 times IR. And then you have your seconds, 2, 4, 7, 15. These are your dials. If you go back up to the dials, you'll see these numbers on the dials. But in this moves the curve, so that tells you that curve goes up and down. Here is your two, three, four, five, six, eight, seven. Where's nine? Where's nine? There's a 10. There's no nine. And there's a 12. That's your short time pickup moving down to the bottom. And then you have your short time delay a 300 millisecond, 120 millisecond, and an instantaneous. And there's letters P, Q, and R, M, N, and O. Those are on the dials that are on the front of the unit. So when an engineer picks the trip curve and says the trip settings need to be this, they need to be installed that way and the dials need to be turned. Felix, you're welcome, buddy. And then here is your instantaneous. And the instantaneous, look, it says current in amperes. So we shifted gears on you. This instantaneous, it's a fixed override. And look, it's at 1,000, 2,000. So the bottom of it picks up just below 2,000 amps and up. That's where your instantaneous picks up on this breaker. Regardless of the ampere rating, it's at 2,000 amps. 15 amp breaker, 20 amp breaker, all of that jazz. And look, and look at the data. You have the types, 240 volts, 480, 600 volts, curve accuracy, plus or minus, ambient temperatures, 50, 60 hertz. Um, Oh, there is a memory effect that can act to shorten the long time delay. The memory effect comes into play if a current above the long delay pickup value exists for a time and then is cleared by the tripping of a downstream device of the breaker itself. A subsequent overload will cause the circuit breaker to trip in a shorter amount of time than normal. I'm telling you, you've got to read these informational notes that are in the, on these, uh, on these uh, tables and these time current characteristic curves. They give you a lot of information. This is the resume for this circuit breaker. It tells you how it responds. When you program them on the faceplate and you put current through those sensors, that trip unit will tell you exactly how it responds. You've got to read all of these. And if there's something in these notes you don't understand, who are you going to call? The manufacturer. I hope it makes sense. Now, let's take a look at a different manufacturer. Let's take a look at um, General Electric Trip Curves. Just Googling. Time Current Characteristic Curves, ABB. I forgot. They were purchased by ABB. Look at this. Circuit Breakers. Insulated case circuit breakers, miniature circuit breakers, supplementary protectors, molded case circuit breakers. And they have their thermal mags, E150s. Look at this, molded case circuit breaker type EYD, EYH. You click on one of those. Look at this. Look at the top. Multiples of current rating. Where else did you see that? You saw that on a different manufacturer's curve. So this is... Um, Enclosure compensated for other than 40 degrees C. There's your maximum and your minimum. There's your 15, 20 up. They're giving you the instantaneous pickup values. And there's your clearing times all on this curve. 
type TEYD, TEYH, and these are their catalog numbers, 15 to 35 amps. Look, they do 15 to 35 amps on one TCC curve. Let's see if there's any other data on here. There's no other data. So you've got temperature data, you've got time, and they go down to 0.01 seconds. You've got your transition points, curves show in, uh, enclosure compensated circuit breaker in open air, 40 degree amp ambient wire with conductors. Wired with conductors of corresponding radar, no prior load. Uh, you got your voltage ratings, 277 volts, single pole. So you got your voltage, you got your frequencies, 60 hertz, and there's your current ratings. Long time delay thermal trip, not adjustable. Instantaneous magnetic trip, right over my shoulder here, not adjustable. All right, let's go to another one. Let's try a um, molded case circuit breaker. Um, I don't know what record plus is. Let's just look. I don't know what record plus is. We're going to try it out. Current limiting. Look at this. They got current limiting information right on the trip curve. Pretty cool. All right. Let's take a look at um, lighting panel, thermomagnetic. I'm looking for. Long time delay and instantaneous. Still a thermomag breaker. I'm looking for their electronic trip units. Let's go to insulated case. Power break two. We're going to see some good looking curves here. Look at this. Very similar. So most of us, there's no standards on these trip curves, but um, they will they'll give you a lot of information. Every manufacturer's is a little different. So there's your, this is multiples of current setting, C. Um, multiples of current setting, C. And let's take a look. You have the frame and you have your current sensor, S. C is the current setting amps down here over my shoulder. C is the current setting amps. S is current sensor amps. So X is your plug amps. So they do things a little differently. And quite frankly, you go from manufacturer to manufacturer and try to read these curves can be a chore. I'm not as familiar with the GE. It's been a while since I've plotted GE curves but or ABB curves. Um, square D curves are going to be a little different. Let's take a look at some Siemens, Siemens curves. Siemens uh, TCC curves. And look, see, I hate that. They say time current curves. It's not a time current curve. It's a time current characteristic curve. Randy Dollar. I got I to gotta go beat him up. So here, look at this. Uh, Siemens ITE molded case circuit breakers, multiples of current breaker continuous current rating. And this is, and that's very similar to the 100%, right? So this is, if this was a 20 amp breaker, this would be 20 amp. It's multiples of that. So this is 20 amps. And look, this is um, maximum single pole. We saw that on a different manufacturer's breaker as well. Remember, that was the Eden breaker. And then there's your uh, point oh, all the way down to 0 0.001 seconds. So this time current characteristic curve goes down to 0 0.001 seconds. Well done, Siemens. Well done. Low instantaneous, high instantaneous. And look at the data over here. There's your instantaneous trip tables, fixed instantaneous trip ranges for the 15 to 20, 25 to 40. Got the interrupting ratings. A lot of information on these time current characteristic curves. All right, so we've been through multiple manufactured devices. We showed you that the TCC curve from a manufacturer will have a different across the top and, a, and, and up, up the sides always time. But sometimes they'll do multiples of rating, multiples of, of either IN or S or C or whatever it is. Every manufacturer is going to be a little different. We're not consistent in that regard. You'll have varying adjustabilities on electronic trip units. And the adjustability, the, the long time pickup is there to protect the conductor. The instantaneous is there to protect the device from self-destruction. 
any of the settings in between, the short time delay, the short time pickups, whether it is a, a, an angle like this or, or an, a nice uh, I to the 4T like this, is there because of coordinating with upstream and downstream devices. You want fast clearing times to reduce damage, but you don't want to interfere with a motor starting, a transformer inrush current, or other overcurrent devices to make sure that they do their job and you do your job and you don't overlap. And that's the TCC curve. Current across the bottom, time up the side. It's the performance of how a circuit breaker responds to currents. Higher the currents, the faster the clearing times. You want a fast clearing time? Feed the beast. Give it current. More current makes a device trip faster. Don't exceed the ratings. We talked about, uh, we showed SKM and how that, uh, from a coordination perspective. I can't think of anything else to cover from the TCC perspective. And we're at an hour and 21, one hour and 21 minutes. Nikolai Tesla. Yes, Mr. Siemens. It's a time current characteristic curve. You got to take it back to your product line. Put the C in there. It's not a time current curve. All right. Fix it. I know Square D does the same doggone thing. I had that discussion at a NEMA and or at an IEEE event as well. Time current characteristic curve. Please put the extra C in. I know it's a little bit more to say. Yep, tell Vince Della Croche. Fix it. All right, gentlemen. Ah, Robert from Omaha does maintenance. Oh, you are good. Hey, come on. I knew somebody was going to ask that. Yes. Maintenance will have... Remember, all of these trip curves that we've looked at, whether it be Siemens, Square D, GE, or Eaton, if there is rust in there, if there is water in there, if you um, misapplied them, if you if they're damaged, it may take longer for that overcurrent device to open. And if it, and and so yes, it could be impacted based on. maintenance so everything that i've showed you remember is based on an ambient temperature within the ratings it's based on 50 60 hertz in some cases 60 hertz only and it's a it's a new breaker it's a it's a device that is operating appropriately and you have to Follow manufacturer's instructions on how to properly maintain molded case circuit breakers, insulated case circuit breakers, fuses, power circuit breakers, medium voltage, low voltage. Yes, lack of exercise. It's just like you and me. Put me on a couch for about a week and tell me stand up and do something. It ain't going to be pretty. And it's going to be slow. Gotta get the joints going. Oh, I can't move. TCC's libraries have to be available. Yes, and I'm telling you, you can just go go online um, and and just you know Google it uh, or search it. Um, uh, see Square D TCC curves, time current characteristic curves, circuit breakers. Oh, well, uh, all trip curves. <laughs> there we go. Uh, curve, melting alloy relay design. Uh, so he, look, they, they even have, um, they've got, look at this, uh, frame, 100, 125 to 150. Let's open up a, um, we're going to open up a main circuit breaker. I'm going to download it. 
There it is. There's squared E curves. I'm telling you, you know, I can remember, Felix, when I didn't have the internet, I had to call manufacturers. I had to, I would have to call, oh my gosh, I'll tell you what, ITE, those were the, I used to pull my hair out, who owned ITE? Um, I'd have to call, I'd have to, I'd call Westinghouse, I'd call GE, Cutler Hammer. I needed a trip curve, or if you find an old trip curve, say an old breaker, right? And you need to find that old breaker. Where are you going to get the trip curve for the old breaker? I had a, and I still have somewhere around here, a library of trip curves. Oh, here. Yeah. I just pulled out my, uh, pulled out one of my binders of trip curves. Look at this. I got I got my ABB curves. I got my Kearney fuse curves. Kearney fuse curves. These are all my Kearney fuses. What are these? Uh, these are all fuses current limiting. I got some onion skin here too. These are fuse curves. Fuse curves. Here's some of my breaker curves. I've got uh, a library full of onion skins somewhere behind me in my library. Um, when you are a uh, protective relaying engineer, a selective coordination, a power systems engineer, you will hunt for curves. And you will... And when you find your treasure troves, so here's, here's the thing. I can remember talking to a guy from uh, Siemens, I think it was. This was back, this is a while ago. And I needed um, ITE, I think it was trip curves. And I, and I learned that Siemens had acquired uh, ITE rights or whatever. So I would call and, and I, I called this gentleman who forwarded me to somebody else. And he says, what are you looking for? I said, I'm looking for trip curves are on onion skin to be really thin paper. And I needed for, and I told him which breakers. And he says, you know what? He says, I got a whole mess of them right here. He said, I'm going to send them to you. I said, great. I was working at Florida Power Corporation at the same, at the time down in Crystal River, Unit 3. That's where I was. I was working down there, but I was doing a project for somebody else. It was a commercial, commercial app, large commercial. I don't know if it was the Alcoa plant or whatever it was. I don't, it was one of these big plants. And, um, he sent me these, I mean, it was for every single ITE breaker. And I'll tell you what, I was, I had people that didn't even work for, for Gilbert Commonwealth, because that's who I worked for at the time, which is now Parsons Power. I was Gilbert Commonwealth, and I had people calling me from other consulting firms looking for my onion skins. And here's what I did learn, too, that when you photocopy an onion skin, when you photocopy it wouldn't, things were off a little bit. They were, everything was like a little bit larger or a little smaller, I can't remember. So I had to be careful if I carve, if I copied a time current characteristic curve, you couldn't just trace it. What you had to do was take the copied TCC curve, take a clean piece of onion skin and transpose the numbers. And then you could use your new onion skin to overlay on other onion skin curves. Now we got software. You don't need to make a light table and all this other good stuff. But back in the day, hey, that background looks familiar. I said, Dan, yeah, have you been up to uh, Nikolai Tesla? Have you been up to, um, <clears throat> you been up to the uh, PSEC? But yeah, this is out of the PSEC. It's just a... Um, I, I doctored it up. I took that photo and made it my background. All right, gentlemen and ladies, cats and jammers, kids and adults that are all watching, learning about TCC curves. I've rambled on for an hour and a half, and I'm on vacation today. So I hope you got something out of it. I'm on vacation until next year. But I'll still be going live. And um, 
helping things out. Using your slide rule as a straight edge. Yes, I have my slide rule somewhere here. I don't know if it's here. I've got my slide rule somewhere. Thank you, Mr. Hofkin. Happy holidays. Expect an email from me, Michael. I'll be sending it to you. Give you a thumbs up here shortly. I'm going to fire this other computer up and get my email going. All right, everybody out there. Thanks for all that you do for electrical safety. Will do, Michael. Thanks for everything that each of you do for electrical safety. Thanks for what you do for the electrical industry, participating here, the dialogue, the, <clears throat> the, um, the questions, the comments are all great materials that help the IAEI's channel. Phil, Hadia, thanks for being with us here, Phil. Great talking to you, Michael Hofkin, Felix Sandoval, Nikolai Tesla, the Nikolai Tesla himself. Steve, thank you for joining us. Robert from Omaha, Felix Sandoval, all the way down there from Columbia, South America. David Engelhart, you guys are awesome. God bless you. I really appreciate you and all you do. And, um, Stay out of trouble, and remember, stay safe, and please, stay healthy. Don't forget to subscribe. Thumbs up. If you're going to thumbs down, you have to hit it twice. Subscribe to the IAEI's YouTube channel. Please, thank you. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad. All that great stuff. Take care. Stay safe. God bless. Till next week. Merry Christmas.